Boeing is preparing for the possibility that the Trump administration might cancel the space launch system, the SLS rocket. Today, Boeing held a meeting where they warned employees that the Trump administration budget proposal, which is coming out in March, or expected to come out in March, might actually cancel the space launch system. We've heard rumblings of this from time to time you know, over the past several months since the election, that the possibility of Elon Musk being so close to Donald Trump that Elon Musk whispering in Donald Trump's ear might lead to the cancellation of SLS and the rearrangement of the Artemis program, if not altogether cancellation of the Artemis program in favor of going to Mars. Now, don't know anything about that aspect yet. What we do know, and this reporting is coming from Ars Technica and Bloomberg, I'm linking them below in the description. This meeting was held today, very short meeting, no questions taken. And if you look at the calendar, we're looking at about 60 days. So they needed to give a 60 day period of warning before any mass layoffs or shutting down of facilities. This is Boeing warning people that 400 employees might get cut because SLS might get cut. And I feel for those employees, I do, but I hope they saw the writing on the wall. Um, it's sort of been a long time coming. Now, this is not guaranteed. It might not happen. But I have said in the beginning of the year, I put out a video where I said that for Artemis, I wanted SLS and Orion canceled and, and Gateway. You can look at that video next. And so for me, like this is something that I think is best for the space industry as a whole, for the US space program, for human exploration, is getting rid of a rocket that is not working out, that is extremely expensive. So while I do feel for those employees who may or may not get cut, the 400 or so, um, that's about uh, over a third of the workforce working on SLS by the way, according to Bloomberg, those people will lose their jobs. And that sucks. I've, I've been there. Um, but at the same time, I hope that they were already considering this possibility, especially over the past few months with all of the news talking about the possibility that SLS might finally be gone. Um, I knew it was going to be gone eventually. I got a lot of pushback a few years ago where I said SLS is going to be canceled at some point in the next, in the next few years. I don't remember exactly how long I said, but I got a lot of pushback because SLS has been so popular with Congress. And there's the caveat, right? Because the budget proposal that the Trump administration would put out is only a proposal. It is Congress who decides what the funding is. It's Congress who decides who gets the money and where that money goes. Congress can come back and say, actually, we want to keep this. And in this case, like nothing changes. Um, stay tuned. I'll be on top of this for sure. I'll be watching every one of those hearings that happens, looking at the legislation. Uh, but the thing here is that there's no huge champions of SLS left in Congress. Um, the Alabama champion, Senator Richard Shelby, he has retired. He has a successor in place, but with not as much power. Um, the big champion in the Senate was Bill Nelson, who of course retired, became NASA administrator, and since resigned at the end of the Biden administration. And so there's really not a lot of champions of SLS. The proposed, uh, nominated new NASA administrator, Jared Isaacman, he has gone on record, now, at least on you know Twitter X, saying that he is not a fan of SLS. We know that Elon Musk is not a fan of SLS. We know a lot of people in the space industry are just not fans of this rocket. Now, I want to say there are a lot of you out there who are probably thinking SLS is really cool. Why, why are you so against it? And I think I think it's a pretty cool rocket too. The reason why I'm against it is that it's incredibly expensive and it does not launch much. I remember when I was in grad school and they canceled the Ares 1 program back in the Constellation program and I was so upset. I'm like, but we want to go to the moon and Aries one seems like a cool rocket. And I was really mad, but it took um, years of experience and understanding to realize that it was not a sustainable program. It was not a sustainable path. It would be another flag in footprints. It would be another, here's planting the American flag. Maybe we go for a few more missions and can't, like, we don't want that. We want a sustainable program. At least I, I want a sustainable program and I don't see, by the way, does that make the mic click? I don't know. I'm still learning this stuff. I don't want to see SLS and Orion taking people to the moon for a few Artemis missions and then we're done with the moon again for another 50 years. I want to see something more permanent, something that really truly takes us outward beyond low earth orbit. And SLS is not that rocket. It never was that rocket. SLS can't even take astronauts to the surface of the moon. And so well, I can understand the mentality of people who say, if you cancel SLS, we're not going back to the moon because they're skeptical of Starship, you know, SpaceX's Starship, um, the HLS variant. But SLS was never going to be the only rocket, the only vehicle that takes astronauts to the surface of the moon. 
Artemis III needs in its current configuration, it needs SLS and it needs a successful Starship HLS. So for those people who are skeptical of Starship and think Starship's not gonna work, well then you're skeptical that we're ever gonna get people on the surface of the moon, period. Why have SLS and Orion when you have Starship that is proposed to take humans from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the moon and then the surface of the moon back to the surface of the Earth? So why have an intermediary? Um, you know, Blue Moon can't do that, but who knows, maybe with New Shepard, eventually it can. According to Ars Technica, according to Eric Berger, again linked below, SLS has cost NASA, SLS and its ground systems, the, the tower, all of that, has cost NASA $3 billion per year. And it's been over 10 years. So that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that could go to other NASA programs. I have a, a video on the most expensive rocket tower ever. If you want to check that out, it's absolutely absurd. That's for the uh, next version of SLS past Artemis 3. I've been telling people all along, it's a feature, not a bug, that it is that expensive because SLS and Orion and other things related are jobs programs. It's literally written in the legislation. Like This is not my opinion. This is fact because it was written in the legislation. You can look it up yourself. It was written or spoken in the legislative hearings. Like This is something that was created by Congress to save space shuttle employees jobs. As the space shuttle retired. So you will see in the legislation references to saving jobs in certain regions and saving jobs in certain companies. Like it is a jobs program. And so if you have it over budget, if you keep funneling money toward it, that means more jobs. Like it's a feature. It's not meant to be cost effective. It's meant for the US government to have its own rocket, its own transportation, and to have the means of providing jobs to highly qualified, highly technical people who probably want their rocket to succeed. Like if I was working on one of those missions, I, I would feel pretty dissatisfied if you're working years after years after years and SLS and Orion still haven't gotten people off the ground. They still haven't launched Artemis II with people on board. Unfortunately, Boeing is just suffering quite a bit right now with quality control issues. I have several videos on that regarding Starliner, but I have one involving SLS, which you can check out there. And that's just one example. All the problems that Boeing's leadership, Boeing's quality control have been having over the past few years that have really been a detriment to the space program and to aviation, but that's a whole other story. I, I, as much as I feel sorry for the individuals who might lose their jobs because of an SLS cancellation, I think it will be good for the industry as a whole. I think that restructuring Artemis is a good thing, and I'm very glad that we're finally doing it after so many years of it just not working. There is a sunk cost fallacy that says that if we keep on pouring money into this, eventually it'll work, which is it may or may not be true, actually, <laughs> because we have seen time and time again that they, NASA has poured money, Congress has poured money into other human exploration programs that have just been canceled with no humans returning to the moon. I don't want that for Artemis. I'm actually quite a fan of Artemis. I want Artemis to succeed, and therefore I want it to succeed on budget. I want it to succeed on schedule. I don't want it to continue to be an embarrassment where every year we see continuous slips, where every year there are reports coming out from OIG and GA oh, about all these problems that NASA may or may not be transparent about, that Boeing may or may not be transparent about. I think that this will ultimately be a good thing if SLS is canceled. It's a cool big rocket, sure. But what about cool big rockets that can launch more frequently at a more affordable price and have it be politically stable? There's multiple definitions to sustainability. One of them is political will. And political will is what canceled Apollo. So we need to make sure that the political will is there to continue the Artemis program. Now, it is possible that the SLS program will not be canceled immediately. I had been saying that I think it would be canceled after Artemis 3, after we send humans to the surface of the moon, before the next version of SLS that requires that super expensive tower and all the other upgrades. Before then, I think that we might be on a good track to actually launch eventually. I, I don't know how Orion's heat shield issue is right now, but apparently um, Janet Petro has been arguing that. So Janet Petro is the former center director of Kennedy Space Center. Now she is the interim NASA administrator before there is a new administrator who is confirmed, Jared Isaacman. It is possible that we're not gonna see an immediate cancellation. So it is possible that people will be um, staying on and Boeing that contract for longer. We're just gonna have to see how this plays out. Now, Artemis still may be restructured. It may be that it becomes more Mars-centric. And if you're interested in learning more about how the Trump administration is thinking about moon versus Mars, check out this video next.